Welcome to the second part of the tutorial. Bienvenido a la segunda parte del tutorial. Let's get started right away. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and delete the rotate and the camera. Let's reset. Vamos a resetear todo. Vamos a borrar la cámara y el rotate. Let's create a new camera, 35 millimeter. And let's create a new null object. Let's call it rotate one. And let's make it a 3D layer. Activamos esta capa como 3D. Y la cámara 1 pariente al rotate one. So we're going to parent the camera to the rotate. Let's switch to our top view. And let's hide the optical flares for now. And let's click on draft 3D to disable lights. Apretamos otro botón para apagar todas las luces. So the idea is to have a, a group of photos here and a group of photos here. La idea es tener un grupo de fotos aquí en esta área y otra en esta área. Entonces la cámara va a ir de A a B a C. We want the camera to move from A to B to C. So let's make a copy of this, control D. Hagamos una copia de esta foto. Vamos a mover para acá. Let's go to the rotation properties. Let's put zero. And let's swap it out. Let's see, let's put this one. Using the Alt key, let's swap. Usando la tecla Alt, vamos a hacer el cambio con esta foto. Control D, Control D para hacer otra copia. And let's uh, put the one with Sylvester Stallone. Okay, let's move this up. Let's change the color. Let's uh, rotate a little bit. Así, darle un poco de rotación. All right, let's make a copy of this. Vamos a hacer una copia de estas dos fotos. Control D, Control D to make the copy. And let's move it all the way here. Let's use this one. And let's swap this out. Okay, perfect. Now let's create a new null object. Vamos a crear un null object. Lo vamos a llamar Rotate2. Lo vamos a hacer 3D. We're going to activate the 3D switch, make it a 3D layer. Let's move it down here. Let's make a copy of this null object and let's move it on top. Let's go to the spotlight. We're going to create two more spotlights. Vamos a crear dos luces, una en esta área y una en esta área. So let's hit Control D. Let's move it. Control D, Control D para hacer la copia. Ok, perfecto. And then let's go to our front view. Cambiamos la perspectiva para estar seguro que las luces también. Entonces, esta luz la vamos a subir. Y esta está demasiado alta. This is too high. So go to your different views. That'll help you uh, locate your lights and put them in the right spot. Okay, so we're ready to animate. Oh, hold on. This one. Oops. Okay. So let's go to the, our camera. Cambiamos la perspectiva a cámara 1. Y vamos al rotate 1. Let's go to the rotation properties. And let's rotate this about minus 60, minus 65 degrees. Vamos a rotar como 75. Y para animar lo vamos a hacer simplemente usando estos tres. No objects. To animate this whole project, we're going to use these no objects, the rotate one, two, and three. We're not going to use the camera at all to do um, any movements. We're going to do it all within these three no objects. So let's start. Um, P for position, R for rotation, and let's just add a keyframe. Okay. 
del 0 a 4 segundos vamos a estar en esta foto. From 0 to 4 seconds will be on this group of pictures. So let's add a marker. Then from 4 to 5.15, we'll go to the second group. It'll be the movement, the camera movement. And then from 5.15 to 10, we'll be in the second section. And from 10 to 12, we'll pull the third move. De 0 a 4 segundos, vamos a estar en el primer grupo. De 4 segundos a 5 y medio, vamos a mover la cámara al grupo B. Y nos quedamos aquí en el grupo B hasta los 10 segundos. De los 10 segundos a los 12 segundos, movemos la cámara al grupo C. So, let's go to 4. Vamos para acá. Go to 5.15 and let's find this group. Aquí estamos. Okay. Now, here's the trick. Aquí está el truquito. Cuando llegamos a este punto, el rotate 1 lo vamos a hacer pariente al rotate 2. We're going to parent the rotate 1 to the rotate 2. Now, click on P for position, R for rotation, and let's animate this. Let's zoom in. And let's work on, on the X. Let's straighten it out a little bit. Let's do this. And let's move it down. Aquí, para acá. Boom. Y de aquí para acá, from here to 12, we're going to make our next move, camera move. Okay. And let's parent the rotate 2 to the rotate 3. El rotate 2 lo vamos a hacer pariente al rotate 3. Click P for position, R for rotation, and let's add some keyframes. We'll go to 18. So let's, um, let's do a RAM preview so you can see what's going on. I'm on RAM preview para que miren lo que está pasando. Okay. So it looks a little bit funky. Se mira un poco raro. El movimiento no está bien. Y lo que tenemos que hacer es, y te voy a mostrar por qué está pasando esto. Si miramos aquí en el Rotate 1, si miramos, si miran bien, hay una curva aquí. Va para arriba y va para abajo. Lo que queremos es que esta línea sea recta, completamente recta. Vamos al rotate 2. So you see these lines right here? They're curved and we want them straight lines. Let's go to rotate 2 and you'll see the same thing. You see there's a, there's a bend, there's a rotate. We want these lines completely straight. And in order to do that, We need to, let's select the keyframes. Seleccionamos todos los keyframes. Vamos a animation, keyframe interpolation. No me da, let's go one by one. Okay, okay, okay. We're working, estamos trabajando con la posición. We're working with the position. So go to animation, keyframe assistant, keyframe, keyframe interpolation. And right now it's set to auto Bezier. Queremos cambiarlo a linear. We want to change this to linear. So we'll make this is make sure this is linear as well. Linear, linear, okay. We check. Let's check now. Vamos a checar los keyframes. Y mira, you can see that this is straight. This is straight. Está, está recto. Vamos a checar esto. Recto, recto. Okay, si hacemos un RAM preview. Perfect. Está búfalo. 
It's looking really good. It's looking really nice. So let's see it in action. Now the next thing is let's add some easy ease. Let's uh, smooth out the, the transitions, the movements with some easy ease. Le vamos a dar un poco de, de easy ease en los keyframes. Vamos a poner key, keyframe assistant, easy ease in. Perdón, este va a ser easy ease out. Este va a venir aquí. Este va a ser easy ease in. Esto lo va a ser, lo vamos a poner easy ease in. Perdón, easy ease out. Este va a ser easy ease. Y esto lo vamos a hacer easy ease out. Esto va a ser easy ease in. Okay. Let's show you one more thing. Take a good look at the keyframes. First of all, there's not a lot of keyframes. It's clutter free, it's clean, they're lined up, it's very efficient, and it allows you to make quick adjustments. Fíjense muy bien en los keyframes. Como se dan cuenta, no usamos bastante keyframes. Están ordenadito en fila, y esto te permite trabajar rápido y hacer cambios fácilmente. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's turn on the lights. Hagamos click en el botoncito Draft 3D para activar todas las luces. Y una cosa que me gusta hacer es tener una luz encendida al tiempo. One thing I like to do is have one light on at a given time. So let's go to our top view. And you see all our lights are turned on. So what we're going to do is, let's go to our spotlight. Vamos a la primera luz. Vamos a la propiedad de la luz. Y vamos a hacer un keyframe de la intensidad. Let's go to the intensity. And from 4 to 5.15, let's drop it down. So it turns off when the camera, cuando la cámara se mueve de A a la B, la luz se apaga. Right here, it turns off. And then in spot 2, we'll turn on. So let's go to four. This should be turned off. So let's hit zero. So this will turn on. And then at 10 to 12, this will turn off. And this one will turn on. So let's go to this one. And here it's. So let's see what it's doing. So set la camera. The camera's right here. As the camera goes here, it goes to this one, this turns on, the second one turns on, la segunda se, se enciende, y cuando va de la B a la C, la tercera se enciende. So let's check it out, let's see what it looks like. Let's turn optical flares. All right, let's speed it up in time so you can see the RAM preview. Nice. It's looking really good. Está buenísimo. Está búfalo. Now, the wood texture, I'm not really feeling the wood texture. What I like to do sometimes is rotate it, especially on the Z-axis, kind of spice things up, make it look more interesting, the scene. Eh, la madera está un poco sencillo y me gusta siempre, me gusta darle un poco de rotación para darle más dinámica a la escena. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Se mira mucho mejor. And to wrap this tutorial up, let me show you how to add graphics, logos, and text to the scene. Para concluir este tutorial, déjame enseñarte cómo añadir logos y textos a la escena. Vamos a poner Alexis versus Prior. Let's put it down here. Let's make it a 3D layer. And let's go to our top view. Cambiamos la perspectiva de arriba. Lo vamos a mover aquí. Y let's go to our front view para ver dónde está. It's down here, so let's move it up. Let's go back to our active camera. 
y lo vamos a cambiar la rotación. Let's change the rotation to 270. We can make this bigger. Lo podemos hacer más grande. Le podemos cambiar el blending mode. We can change the blending mode. Let's, um, let's see which one works. I like overlay. Y lo podemos poner un poco de blur. We can add a little bit of blur. Okay, so it sticks. So it comes here. Alexis versus prior. And then maybe here in this one, we can add a logo. Let's put the Nicaraguan emblem, coat of arms. Podemos poner una foto, una imagen también. En este caso, vamos a poner la bandera de Nicaragua. Podemos darle un overlay. can do an overlay. Maybe we want to dial it down a little bit. Let's add a little bit of blur. Okay. So here we go. And let's say you want to add optical flares in this one. So let's, uh, si quieren poner, añadir optical flares en este lado. Okay, podemos hacer uh, Let's go to our solids. Go to, lo llamamos Optical Flares 2. Video Copilot, Optical Flares, Options. Let's select this one. Let's make it 3D, lo vamos a hacer 3D. Vamos a hacer Screen. Y no aparece. You can't see it. So let's change our custom view. And you see the optical flare is right there. Let's disable the first one. It's right there. So what we need to do is we need to move it. Tenemos que mover el flare. Ooh, hasta aquí. Hasta como aquí. Okay. Let's go back to our active camera. And... Okay. So muy alto. So what we can do is the Z. Let's see. Okay. And then the last step is let's add motion blur. El último paso, le vamos a poner motion blur. Aquí está el motion blur. We're going to activate motion blur. Hit the motion blur button. And that's it. Let's turn it on. And let's, let's check it out. Let's see how it looks. If you could fight any fighter, living or dead, who would you like to fight? Alexis Aguil. Don't know. He's he's unbelievable, unbelievable fighter. And this is it with motion blur. And here it should be Arguello versus Pryor. Instead of Alexis, you always use the boxer's last name. It's a simple technique. You have a lot of null objects and they're all parented to each other in a chain. And I've used this to animate many complex photo collages. And I've used it in many jobs for Fox Sports, for ESPN. It really works. I encourage you to try your very own. If you have any feedback, any questions, post a comment below. Please subscribe. I'll be making more tutorials. And let me know your thoughts on this experiment of making it bilingual. Bueno, eso es todo. Simplemente usamos varios no objects y todo pariente al uno al otro. Eh, lo he usado en proyectos para Fox Sports, para ESPN. Espero que hayan aprendido y espero que lo implementan en sus proyectos. Gracias por ver este video. Si tienen preguntas, dudas, sugerencias, por favor me mandan su feedback. And thank you for watching. 
Always stay creative and let it flow like agua from an agua.